Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of Let's Build, or how I come up with ideas in the toy box, and how I go step by step in making things. So this is not the tutorial of this particular build you see right here. And I do have a Let's Build for this. It's not done. I want to make sure I can get to the end, and which is a good thing because I was ready to throw this away because the graphics memory meter is exceeded its limit, even though the mod that I did uh, with the memory meter doesn't show it. It doesn't show it being uh, exceeding the limit. It shows it almost there. Uh, however, it doesn't even uh, give me the chance to give a, get a warning. It just, it'll crash. It will crash when you're in spark mode or and sometimes it won't even load. All right, so I've come down to it and I've done some tests. I thought it was surface area. It is not surface area. I thought that was it. I did some tests and it is not. However, I did some tests uh, regarding simple toys versus castle walls. And castle walls is probably four times as much graphics memory as simple toys see right there it crashed and i'm just gonna loop it again so i can finish my statement so just a dis disclaimer here this toy box has not been kiboshed so what i did is i went through and actually deleted all the walls that's something more than likely you'll see upcoming so what you're going to see in these next two videos is one of the decisions that I made to make this style toy box on a smaller scale. So keep that in mind. What I'm building in this particular episode and the next episode is not this toy box. It is a similar reconstruction. And again, that's not complete. Uh, I did two episodes and then I found out that, oh, let's just delete all the castle walls and go in. So I resumed this one. So I got two toy boxes that I'm currently working on, and you're going to see part one. Uh, this one right here that you're about to see is, is going into my mind, my brain, and how I construct things. And the second one, the actual implement, implementation of the Excel into the Disney toy box. So hopefully no crashes, fingers crossed, hands raised to God, <laughs> pray that we know, have no crashes. And uh, I'm talking about long-term crashes. Disney Infinity is going to crash regardless of what. But anyway, on with the show. Let me take you to the map here. All right. So I'm using Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to show you all my tips and tricks with Excel here. But I just wanted to show you this is the current map that's based on each one of these squares represents a four by four block and a four by four. I have, what I did is I set each one of them down as a racetrack piece. So let me see somewhere in episode one. Let me just play it. All right. Hopefully I can. Yeah. So that's what I did to, to map it out. All right, you seeing this? All right, you seeing this? So I have all this recorded, and uh, I don't know what I get, episode 16, and then it started crashing. So that's a no-go. Um, beautiful city. Um, and I'll show you what it's based on after a while. So, and I would consolidate these uh, track pieces as I moved along, but since there, those track pieces are four by four, that's what I use. And that's what each one of these squares represents. All right. So you have, let's call this a plaza. The idea is hopefully I'm pretty sure. Let me look in the OBS here. Yes. It's picking up the uh, cursor. So this is going to help us out. So the idea is this is a road. Okay. And, uh, the color coding is uh, represents a level. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. 
but each of these squares is, I would, I call it a plaza. So what I do, this would be a T crossroad. So you could drive through here, right? And then you could turn and go this way or this way. But right here, these outer squares uh, are buildings. Whether they're two buildings or three buildings, uh, regardless, they're buildings, okay? And I didn't even get that far. I got the Darling Nursery Houses in this section over here. This is where I had the Monsters University Mansion. But when you look down, I had the castle walls going down underneath each of these. So think about this looking at it as a bird's eye perspective. It turns out to be this. I'm chopping this off pretty much, but still consolidating even more. So this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to recreate this so you can see what I uh, do in case you have Excel or open source Excel. What is it called? Office Suite. And I think that's open source. It means it's free. All right, so the controls might be a little bit different than Excel. I don't know. Maybe you get a plug-in where all the controls are the same. I don't know, but I have Excel. So this is what I use instead of graph paper. Well, graph paper, you can run out of room. So I'll show you all this in a second. But what is this based on? Some people ask, how do you get all these ideas? Well, here's a little secret. I play games and I pay attention to what is platform or mapped out um here's a scene from octopath traveler uh to the second one i i don't own the game i this is just something that i would do is get something like this mapped out but i don't think somebody's gone through and got these maps but what they have done if you remember a game called final fantasy 6 actually it was final fantasy 6 in japan over here in the States, when I was growing up, it was, it was Final Fantasy III. But Final Fantasy III, the actual one, is a totally different game. So FF6 Maps. Let's just say Narsh. And go to Images. Anyway, so here it's listed as 3 because the it was... Uh, yeah, so Final Fantasy III because it was Super Nintendo. Uh, I don't know if I can... Yeah, open link in a new tab. Open image in a new tab. All right, so now I got the full thing. There's other sites with this on there, but you don't see this too much anymore as far as games having the town maps. Uh, but they would produce books and everything like that. So I'm thinking, all right, this will be a simple one. And I've always wanted to do this town. It's just figuring out what some of these things are. Right? So... That's an idea. And there's a position for every town or every every building, even though they're at some weird angle. You could pretty much map that out. All right. So that's an idea. All right. So a while ago, a couple of years ago, I played this game on PlayStation called Lost Sphere. And I don't know what prompted me to buy it, but I did. And so I got rid of my PlayStation a couple years ago because of things that I don't really feel comfortable talking about. Um, but uh, what I'm getting into is I played the game and then I started to remember there was a city in there. And so I found it and uh, I got it on Steam. All right, I'm going to continue because I had a quick save here in the town. All right, so of course it's top down. It's an RPG. Let me just show you this. Go back from the ent the entrance of the town, and of course when you do something like this, you got to play around in it quite a bit in order to get it down pat, right? So don't just think that I'm going to do it. If there's already if there, somebody has it drawn or they somehow hack the camera to pan out so you can see the whole thing and then record it then good, but I don't know how to do that. Um, you know who does? 
but I, I'm not an, I, I don't have, I don't know the guy personally, but, uh, uh, what is the, uh, the show is called boundary break. The channel is called, she says, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, I just took, oops, I didn't want to leave the town. So the town looks totally different from the overworld map. All right. So I'm like, yeah, that looks cool too, but that's just a represented representation. So I want the, uh, South gate here. So this is the bridge going in. So what I did is I said, all right, this is going to represent a four by four. All right. So there's one, there's two and the one right before it. I forgot to count because if I go down there, it's going to take me outside. So one, two, three. So I said, all right, those three, four by fours. Then here, since I'm, I'm trying to make everything square. Then I squared everything around here and I made room for a building. Now our buildings are going to be a little bit different because how the doors are based in Disney infinity, but that's okay. You have to make, uh, you have to make, uh, adjustments as you go around or along because based on, uh, what you have to work with. Okay. So staircase going up. All right. Now four by four staircase or ramp is going to take you up. Uh, let's see two. It's going to take you up two levels because let's say half of this would be one step. So two, three, four, and then you double it. So then you would get two staircases hooked together. So to make your four by four going up. So I took all this into account. Then that bridge came into factor later. All right. So I'm going to show you on Excel, but this is where I get my ideas. It's in other games or, or, uh, old game magazines or source books and things like that. But if you see this, it goes under the bridge, goes down, right? You go up, you go up, right? Now you're on the bridge. Now look down is all these other buildings and the roofs sticking up. I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I've been trying to do for so long. And I was unable to do it. And I know Corazon is not built like this, but what if I make it like this? Not Corazon, but sci-fi. I think this is better. To me, I think it makes more sense. You get these buildings coming up here from down there. So if I were to jump down there, which you cannot, you can't jump down there. You can't go down there, but imagine that there's a street down there and the same thing repeats over and over again until you get to the bottom. All right. So I'm done here. So now back over here. So now this is just based on top down. Now there's a lot of angles and corners going this way. All right. Going this way. If you can see diagonally, but Disney infinity doesn't quite let us do diagonal. You can get diagonal effects, uh, but there's a little bit more ingenuity going on with that. So I don't want to even bother with that. So let me go over uh, to a blank sheet insert worksheet. All right. So you're going to start off in Excel. You're going to have all these cells, but they're rectangles. So what I do, I control a that selects all. And then I change the column width. So because I'm selecting all changing one of the column widths is going to change all the column width. So I go 30 by 30. So going like that. Now they're 30, but still a rectangle. So now I have to control a and change it for the row height and change that to 30. And so, Oh, I just had it. There we go. All right. So now I have squares all over the place. And then for the preliminaries, what I did is I made sure I got enough space 
so I can work and not run out of space. And if I do run out of space, I can always make more room. But so I said one square represents one block. All right. So then I said four squares of four by four, three, four is going to be a what? A four by four block. So I merged that. And then what I did is I just changed the border or added a border to a thick border, right? Now I have one four by four. And every time I drag that to duplicate it, it drags the whole thing. And then I can just control and slide my mouse wheel down and make it smaller. And, uh, and if I want to quickly get rid of one of them, then I just put uh, put the cursor in one of the blocks and get the paintbrush that's on the upper right hand corner. And boom, it's back. So as I said, when I came in to that town, I determined that that front bridge was going to be three, four by four blocks up. All right. Then it had that round circle. But we don't have a round circle, so I said it's going to be square. So the square is going to be up three. Let me just move that over like that. Boom. Now, one of the things when I make a toy box, regardless of or depending on how big I want to make, I have to determine, am I going to use Disney Infinity Roads? which are four by four or which are based on a four width structure, or am I going to build it based on something like, uh, using terrain blocks. And if I was using terrain blocks, I'm going to want to go three by three. So that would be something like this. And you've heard, some of you have heard me talk about that before. Is it a four by four or a three by three? This is exactly what I'm talking about now. To simulate something that's round, which we can't, I'm going to want roads generally to go from the middle, right out from the middle. You can have them going out from the top, but generally speaking, most things, re regardless of the roads or not, are going to have something that's going to stick out of the middle. So that's why I don't want to ever use something that's four by four if I can if I, if I can avoid using a four by four. Or I'm mean, sorry, a, a two by two. Because if I use a two by two, like right here, I can't go in the middle of that. Actually, I can, but not in graph paper. In order to do it in graph paper, what I would do is I would say each block equals a half. So then I would say this equals one, then I would have to go two, three, four to get a four by four. Now this would be a four by four. See how it's bigger than it's bigger than the standard. Why? Because now I wanted to incorporate halves. And if I was going to do that, then I could get a two by two in here for graph paper purposes. But when I just laid this out, I didn't need that. But when I did the Castlevania map, let me see if I can dig that out right quick. All right. So it's color coded, color coded here um, for the grass. But each one of these equals a half. And why I did that was because I had to put three by threes and four by fours in here. All right. So if I needed halves, I would do it like that. So that would be your four by four. But the only problem is uh, with this, you have to zoom out. And when you zoom out, you don't get to see the uh, grid. So that's why I went to here and had squ one square per block. That's why I did that. And then if I need to make fine tuning thing, if I need to fine tune it later on, I will do that. But I don't think I will for this particular build. And hopefully this build doesn't crash. 
hope, what I mean is hopefully this particular build is going to not uh, cause problems. All right, so to the left, and yes, I what I did was uh, I had, I was flipping screens. So I was doing alt tab. Let's say, uh, let's see, somewhere in here I have, I have some recording here of, of Lost Sphere. So pretend I'm playing the game, right? So I'd, I'd pause the game and then I'd flip out, right? I'd flip out. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> so I, I'd just alt tab and I'd say, all right, then this goes up here, then then I'd count as we're going along. Then I'd pause it. And then I'd say, all right, this goes up, but it all had to connect. So if I knew this one reached a particular point and then off here watching it so, so many times, this actually goes up uh, a little bit further and then goes to the left. And then I had to do the same thing over all the way over to the right side of the game or of this uh, city and do the same thing and of course the pieces weren't going to match because of the angles but i could pretty much justify where they went because of where the bridges went and everything else and the stairs went so i made them connect and i actually i did the same thing for the millennium falcon years ago because that's round i'm like i don't have all these pieces but eventually i'm going to make it connect so you're going to uh, sacrifice one of the things is it's it's not really important it can be but when you're making something round into a square you have to go further around to uh, make something to get something to work <laughs> anyway so if this is a circle in real life and I'm making it a square and the road comes off in the middle again I need this to be at least three represented by three so I can go in the middle or five it has to be odd let's put it that way so I measured this out trial and error to go out four four by four blocks and then from here actually off here that is a building right here so I wanted to mark this as a building, so I'd right click on that and go to uh, format cells. And one of the things you can do is pattern fill, something that you're not gonna use for anything else. Say, all right, that's gonna represent a building. All right, everything else represents road. That's gonna represent a building. So the road's gonna go right up alongside it and then you're gonna have a staircase. So the staircase, again, four by four, I'm going to right click on that, go back to format cells and pattern style, and I'm gonna select the uh, horizontal stripes. All right, so now that represents, that's eight stairs uh, together. And you're gonna see me incorporate all of that uh, as we progress. Now, I started off, um, I wanted to make the lowest level that I could find white and then go up color coding. So I made a legend, right? And then let me just change the font within that legend so I can write in here. And I said white equals one, uh, wait, one equals white. Oh, that's right. Don't hit enter. Comma. Two equals gray. Or if you're in uh, Europe, gray. But my middle name, for everybody to know, is A-Y. I'm not making this up. It's, <laughs> it's generational. So that's how we spell our name. Like the Crayola Crayon. I'm curious though, does the Crayola Crayon in Europe have an E? Let me know in the comments below. Because I know the Crayola Crayon, at least growing up in the States, it was with an A. 
I don't know. It's Canadia. I think ca- ca- Canadia. <laughs> I think Canada is the same, isn't it? Canada uh, has the same rules as, uh, as, as England. I think. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Canadians uh, have certain uh, lingo that's the same. And it's weird because it's closer to uh, the States. But I think it's because of the history of the colonization and stuff like that. Uh, by some of the... Uh, like Z- uh, Z instead of zero. Because uh, we say zero, but British... And uh, I don't know, French maybe, I don't know. Europe and Canada says Z. Um, anyway, I'm just curious. So I said two equals gray, and uh, three uh, was going to be yellow, and four equals blue. Okay. And then you can't see it, so I have to right click on it. And then I'd have to go to alignment and go to wrap text. All right, so now I can see it and I don't get messed up. So because I know what's going on, I know there's uh, at least one level that is lower than these. So I'm going to color these gray. This is the second level. All right, and the only way you're gonna know that is study the map that you're going to copy. Right. If everything's on a, f- a plane, a, a level playing field, then you don't have to worry about that. Right. So the next thing from here over is uh, another staircase. So I'm going to right click on that format cells and then go into fill. And instead of having the horizontal stairs, I'm going to have the vertical stripes. All right. So then we're going to go up one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this one down and then I can move that over here. So this is going up. So this is telling me it goes up instead of going down. So it's going to be a level three. So level three, I want it to be yellow. Or orange or whatever. Yellow. Let's pick yellow. All right. So that is going to go over from here. Two more. Right, and then up one, that's going to be a building. So if I right click on that, format cells and pattern style, I think I was using that. That represents a building. Doesn't have to be color coded, but it is. And then if I'm, I decided to have a wall here, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to leave that alone. On my drawing, I have blocks that represent walls. Um, oops, I messed that up. This actually goes over here. In the actual game, this is an elevator going to the observatory, but those are levels that don't connect. It's just, you're going here, use your imagination, and you don't know it doesn't connect. You're playing the game. It looks right. You know, another thing I could do, instead of making the, uh, Put in those meshes there. I can uh, control A. Just change the font type to 72 for everything. The same as what I had over here. And then type a big old B in there. That stands for building. That might be more, make more sense, right? Have a big old B. All right, so staircase here. So over here, we also have another staircase. So I'm going to just drag that over and then move it right there. And then it actually went up two. So this is going to go up four levels. So it's going to go from three. Now, when I say four levels, uh, I'm counting. How do I explain this? It would actually be, if you wanted to go by blocks, it would say one, three, five, six. But since I don't have anything in between, I'm just trying to make it easy on me and how it looks in here. One, two, three, and four. You get what I'm talking about? 
because these are only these are actually going up two levels. Each each staircase is going up two. Right? But I since I'm using it as a block, to me, I don't want to get confused. So I only counting it as one on the legend. All right. So that's just my mind. That's how I think. All right. So then yellow is three. So when we get up here, oh, I do have a five. All right. Say five equals green. Okay. So then here, I'm just going to drag that down so I can steal one of those and put that up here. And this is going to be green. So find a green, any color green. And then from here, I'm going to drag this over three more and it's going to line right up with that staircase. So see, as we were on level two, all right, we went up to three, then we're going to go up here. Now, this is tricky. This is definitely a two. This is a five. This staircase does not take it, take you to here. This staircase actually goes underneath this. All right. So knowing that this is five, that goes over. So I'll drag that over. It goes right lined up with the end of this. And actually here, I have a staircase. And again, that's going to go underneath this. All right. But this being a three or a two, when it goes up one, it's going to be what? Yellow, because it's going to be a three. So if I just take one of those, put that there. And then from here, it's, it's going to be the same thing right here. Move that there. And because you can't see it, there would actually be a yellow one right under here, but you're just going to have to know that, right? You're going to have to know that it's your toy box, right? All right. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go up three, four, five. Okay. Now this is a building. Oop, capital. And that's going to go over one. Then we got another staircase. So let me drag that down and copy it. And smack that right there. And then we're going to have. This goes over one, then up one. And that's another building. Then we have another staircase. One of the things you can do is copy and paste I'm gonna paste it over there and then drag it down. All right. So now from here, this is three. This is going to go to four and four is what four equals blue. So let me get a square and change that to blue. And this one's going to be plaza like well actually a plaza like park plaza or something like that there's no buildings in this square it's just going to be like uh benches and things like that so let me take this staircase copy and paste it then there's staircase over here now this one goes down so that goes down to the third level. So three equals yellow. So let me get a yellow one. Put that there. It's going to go two blocks over. Then another staircase. Put that there and that's going to go down to two. Two is gray. So take that, paste it and move it. And then I'm going to drag all uh, this all the way down to where it meets the middle of the first 
plaza section, all right? And then that's actually gonna have a road connecting to the plaza, all right? Now, if you go right here, there's gonna be a staircase. Duplicate that and move that right there. And that staircase is gonna go up to three and three equals yellow. So get me a, a yellow block. Put that right there. And this is going to be a road going, whoops, up to a building. One, two, three, B. And then from here, there's gonna be another staircase. I'm gonna put that there. And another staircase, so it's two, staircases together so it's going to go from three to five all right so this is going to go from that bridge all the way down to this road now in the game uh, this actually did some winding around until it got to where it is this is one of the examples i was talking about with uh you have to make it match or it has to line up somewhere on one of the the, the levels so when you're doing it, you might have, you might have it all crooked and you might have to delete rows or make more rows to compensate, to get the final destination to, to match the road that it need the, the destination of the stairs to match the actual road it gets to. So in order to make it still look cool, even though it's not going to be the same. And it's one of the things... I really can't explain how to do that. You would actually have to be in it and 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 have hands-on experience. Uh, before I forget, going up here, the exit, leaving the city, which would probably go to the castle. Two, three, like that. Same as down here, except it's on a higher level there. And uh, here, let's get another staircase. And I'm going to put that right there. Now we're on one. All right. So let me get, we don't have any clear white ones, but this one that goes down. So it goes from two down to one. So that's what I was saying earlier, uh, going through it so many times, right. And drawing it and finding, and that's how I found out that this is the lowest level. Actually, it's not, uh, there's a, there's a secret, uh, path you can take, but that goes down lower than this, but for all intents and purposes, this is the lowest one. So let me get a, no. Why is that even an option? Two, three, four, two, three, four. All right, so let me merge. All right, so now I got my level one and that's gonna go there. That's gonna go over one. And then we want to go up two from there and make a two, three, a three by three plaza. All right, so that's gonna be building, that's gonna be building, that's gonna be building, that's gonna be building. This is probably gonna be part of the building, so we might as well put B there. I mean, you can say it's a wall or whatever. You're not gonna be able to see the door on it, uh, but the other thing you can do is is make the uh, use the uh, incorporate one of the uh, the angle buildings. We only have really there's two of there's three, but I'm not using well. However you want to do it, but you have the pizza shop from Main Street, and you have the pirates, and they don't match. So you're gonna have to use one or the other style, and you also have that one from the actual. Disney Infinity City block or set. So pick what you want to use. All right. So that is pretty much it. And this is a lot smaller than the original one that I was using. Now, I did say that there was a quote, see, oh, building here, building there. But before I do that, I forgot the overhangs. There are overhangs. Uh, some, and you can put more of these in there, but for an overhang, I'm just going to 
have this incorporated as like a one by one. Down four, so so four blocks in a row, and they're uh, they're going to be covered up by uh, uh, using the floor blocks more than likely. But that's just an overhang. You'll see it when we get there, and I might extend it out a little bit more, but. Uh, You'll see what those are when I when I start building them. So, but it's on the same level. But that's what that represents. It, it's like a balcony. And then over here, I have a balcony. And that is, is it, two is two is gray. So I have to use gray. So I'm gonna have. Uh, what do we have? Eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I got it right. Nope, one more. It is eight blocks and I have it. Where did I have that? I think I set it right about there. So not quite where the stairs are, you know, and it might be something I might say, all right, well, this one comes out a little bit longer. Or maybe I make them all small like that. But it, again, these are just bells and whistles. The main part is done. But there's a secret uh, path in the game that actually they did some really good ingenuity on making. But in order for me to do it, I just representing a block, a bunch of blocks, right? So again, one square equals one block. So it comes from uh, off uh, the building. So this is assuming that this building is going to be a small building and I'm going to be able to get behind it. If this doesn't work, then this is going to be no good. And I will not put that in the game, right? So they're two by twos. Oops. Or I mean, one by ones. But I have them in groups of two. And it's going to go underneath that bridge. And then I'm instead of having four stairs together, right? Four in a row. I want to have two in a row, but they're going to be too deep. They're going to go down two levels. So again, remember I said uh, white was one, but then I found out that this goes down a little bit further than the white. So I just left it white and, and called it zero. It's just something fun to have if I can put it in there. If not, then I won't. And if I can, maybe I can put more in there. Um. I wouldn't say you'd drive a well, could you fit a Disney Infinity car down there? I wouldn't put that part of a racetrack. Let's put it that way. So how would I make a staircase? Well, staircases are too long. They're one by twos. So I would merge a block and then border it like that. And then right click on the uh, thing and format cells, pattern style. And I would say horizontal stripe. And then I would drag it like that. So now I have two side by side and then two down like that. And then I would drag that over like this. And then I would make a small square. And again, that would be four by four. So I'm just going to copy one of the white ones here and drag that in there. And voila, and you found your secret area, if it works. Again, it all depends on uh, the building that we get in here. Can we go behind it or not? Does it look good or does it look stupid? Anyway, that's that. And then you, you take this, you highlight your whole thing, 
right? You might want to, if you have a black and white printer, like I do, you're not going to print it in color. So you might want to, you know, move the legend out of the way. And you'd select it. And then you would uh, make sure your page layout, you know, customize your margins. And you got to go to page and fit to one by one. So just fit to, and I say landscape, and then take your margins down to point two, so it gets more of it on the on the paper. If needs, if need be, oh, point two. And I always say horizontal. Okay. And then if I say print, depending on your printer, you, know, you want to select print selection, but it's going to look like that. But since mine's black and white, it's going to print in black and white. And then what you do, if you are in black and white, you just label it based on or color with color pencils or whatever. Uh, based on what you have already drawn. And that is how I I do things in Disney Infinity. And make sure you save your project, of course. And I already have it printed out. And uh, that's what I'm going to structure on. And I will do that. Actually, I'm going to do that in the next episode. Because how, how far along are we? Oh, we just reached an hour. All right, so next episode, I'm going to lay the foundation work for that. And until then, remember to keep on building. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to give me a like before you click out. And also, if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do it, do it now. And click the bell icon if you wanna know what I'm up to before I even know what I'm up to because it helps you see into the future. And I just made that up. Until next time, this is That Brown Bat reminding you to keep on building.